Hi, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Starboard Tech 10 Tuesdays. We are going to uh, jump right in today. Thanks for joining us. We are in our last week of November already. Hard to believe that. And uh, during the month of November, we covered the Maximo uh, industry and add-on solutions. So today we are gonna explore the health, safety, and environment manager solution, which is better known as HSE. So I'm Amy Tatum, and I've been working with Maximo for over 20 years now. I've seen a lot of changes in the software from when I first started in version 3.02 to the current 7.612 release. And I've been an active participant in the, the Maximo community for all of those years, and have worked with IBM and MRO before them on some of the uh, requirements and design and the various solutions that have grown in the product over the years. One of the complaints that I hear from time to time is just that Maximo is, it's too much, it's too complicated, is one of the things that, that we get. Um, and it is, it's, it's a big application, there's a lot of capability there. When you look at this diagram of all of the industry solutions and the add-on solutions and the, the integrations and everything, it can be a bit overwhelming. So one of the things that we wanted to do in the Tech 10 Tuesdays this month was just kind of drill into a couple of the, the specific solutions and talk about those. And maybe uh, what we're going to cover today is some quick wins with, with HSC. So if we look forward to the HSC solution, there's a lot there. So this is another one that when you first look at all of those applications, it, it can be a bit overwhelming. You know, there's operations management, there's control of work. Um, quality, management of change, um, just a lot to go on with the, the HSC applications as they're delivered. Um, so today, to simplify things, I want to talk through just what I would call three quick wins. Um, these are three components of HSC that you can implement pretty simply, uh, pretty quickly, in order to get your user community used to the HSC applications so that as you expand that capability and grow in your use of HSC, you've laid that groundwork and you can um, kind of just grow slow and, and add in functionality as the user community is, is ready for it. So the three things that we're gonna cover, incident management um, and the ability to just report incidents and um, see what's going on there, keep an eye on, on safety issues and, and reliability issues, things like that. We're gonna talk about the operator log, uh, which can be used by shift operators and others for recording qualifying events, and then regulatory compliance, which in and of itself is a huge application and can have a lot of tentacles that expand into other areas of HSC, but we're gonna start with just a simple regulatory permit application, which you can then again grow into a more advanced um, solution. So starting with incident management, um, this is a self-service capability. It's based off the ticket application. And just to show you how easy it can be to create incidents in Maximo, I'm gonna show a quick little demo here of just what that might look like for a self-service user. So I'm gonna go into the um, incident management application here from my Start Center and create a new incident, identify the incident type, and I've got a list of values here, identify an incident category, again, picking from a list of values. Uh, for certain types of incidents, I may also include a safety observation. And then I'm gonna put in a summary of what was the problem. Um, so in this case, I discovered some missing handrails on, on some stairs, which is a safety uh, concern. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll on down to the bottom and identify then if I took any action. Um, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and mark a, a warning in the vicinity to let others know of this risk. And then once I finished all of that, I just simply hit the submit button and I'm done. Now, there were some other fields in the middle of that that I could have filled in, and you might uh, make those required. You might hide those depending on uh, what you want to collect. So there's additional information that can be tied into locations and assets. Uh, there's a map capability, um, et cetera. You could identify people that were impacted. So if it's an il illness or injury, 
um, you might record that. You can also attach photos and documents. But the key is just initially to get people accustomed to recording those incidents. So um, it kind of goes back to the see something, say something type of philosophy and being able to just easily record that you saw an, an incident, that you witnessed something that needs to be reported. Um, that can be done on a mobile device, it can be done on your phone, on a tablet, um, as well as on a laptop computer or a, a PC. So that's one of the quick wins, very easy to in implement, very easy to create training materials for, very easy to deploy out to your organization to just kind of let them know what's going on there. The second piece that we're gonna talk about then is the operator log. So operator logs are something that coming out of an electric utility industry, I've been around for my entire career. Um, back in the day, they were done in an access database or an Excel spreadsheet or even on paper. Um, as an as a implementer, Starboard has often created a configuration for our clients to deploy an operator log type of capability um, using either a custom app or some of the other tables in Maximo. So here with the operator log, we get the ability to just go ahead and replace those paper manual logs with an electronic system and um, bring everything together into one place. Again, you can start small here and grow this. So maybe initially you've just got logs uh, to represent daily or weekly uh, shift logs, but over time that can be used to facilitate shift handovers. Um, you can create incidents from the logs. You can create work orders. Um, you can tie these things together with your assets and other records, including regulations, to just kind of have a good overview of what's going on in your plant or work site. So again, operator logs is just a simple entry point. It's something you can deploy without a lot of effort. It doesn't really require any configuration or customization. And training is easy for your end users because they're already used to recording that log data. They're just gonna be recording it in a slightly different place. The third quick one that I wanna talk about today is regulatory compliance. Um, so this is a big one. There's a lot that can go on here. Um, regulations, just even cataloging all the regulations that you're subjected to uh, can be a daunting task. So identifying regulations is the first step and then associating those regulations to your locations, your assets, your job plans, your PM schedules can help you understand what work are you doing uh, driven by a regulatory compliance issue or what locations and assets are you working on where you need to pay attention to a regulation. Uh, perhaps there's a permit to work or a certificate or something like that that's needed. But gathering those detailed regulations, again, can be very burdensome. So as a starting point, we've seen some folks that will simply identify not the detailed regulation, but maybe just the regulatory body. Is it an EPA regulation? Is it OSHA? Is it related to your building codes or something like that? Or just a general regulation that identifies if it's environmental, um, is it fire protection, life safety? Is it um, related to the FAA or, or something like that? So uh, just getting some initial cataloging of your regulations, getting those registered in the regulatory compliance application, and then beginning to make those connections to locations, assets, work orders, et cetera, is something that you can start with and again, build it over time. So as more data becomes available, as people become more comfortable in the system, then you have the ability to uh, mature that process, tie it in with operating procedures and policies, tie it into permit to work and, and other applications. Um, so not getting overwhelmed with the, the full size of the elephant, but just taking a little bite at a time and growing from there. So that's our 10 minutes. Those are our three quick tips uh, for ways to get started with HSC without uh, becoming so overwhelmed with all of the, the details that you don't get anywhere. So we, we would highly recommend that folks investigate that um, as a way to get started if you have the HSC add-on solution. If you want more information on HSC or any of the, the Maximo add-on solutions, please reach out to us at Starboard Consulting. We would be happy to answer your questions, uh, schedule a deeper dive demo, anything like that. We are all things Maximo and are happy to be part of a very active Maximo community. We look forward to talking to you again in December where we're gonna focus on work orders. 
Uh, we'll have a short December with the holidays coming up, so we'll look at quick reporting, uh, the work center for technicians and every place as options for your work order deployment. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and close this session with a happy Thanksgiving message to everyone. We appreciate your time and your attendance at these sessions and are happy that you were able to join us either live as we were recording or on the replay at a later date. Thanks so much and have a wonderful Thanksgiving.